I am excited to say that we had over 45 um, submissions and we selected five abstracts for a brief lightning um, talk. And so first of all, we're gonna have Dr. Steven Moldem from the University of Texas Medical Branch um, implementation of WHO recommendations for diagnosis and treatment of TB. He'll be followed by Dr. Dr. Mandy O'Connor from Monash University in Australia. And then we'll have Dr. Kainde Ogunyemi from Emory University. He will be followed by Dr. Jill Ten Hor from Maastricht in the Netherlands. And finally, Dr. Hesbon Wow from the African Population and Health Research Center in Kenya. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth, for that introduction. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Stephen Moldrum. I use he, him pronouns. I am an assistant professor of bioethics and health humanities at uh, the University of Texas Medical Branch uh, in Galveston, just down the road. And a lot of people contributed to this project um, who are uh, shown there at the bottom of the screen, uh, including our partners in Botswana at an organization called Victus Global Botswana. And this is also uh, involving a partnership uh, with the Ministry of Health and other partners at Research Center Borstel, Leibniz Lung Center, which is a supranational uh, TB lab uh, in the EU that does capacitation work um, in Southern Africa and uh, 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 the University of California, Irvine. Um, so some funding and disclosures. This is funded by UTMB, my employer, School of Public and Population Health and Institute for Human Infections and Immunity through a pilot seed grant for me. There are no conflicts of interest on the team. And this study protocol is currently under review at the Botswana Ministry of Health and Wellness Health Research and Development Committee, which is the local IRB in Botswana. And the title might be good to say that Implementing Targeted Next Generation Sequencing for Tuberculosis in Botswana, an Implementation Mapping Study Protocol. Um, so, just some introduction and background to the topic drug resistant tuberculosis is a major threat to global health, killing more than 200,000 people per year, predominantly people in the global south. Uh, most cases of drug-resistant TB can be detected and treated. However, the diagnostic methods that are available to do that, um, uh, to, to, to diagnose TB, often do not actually detect drug-resistant TB, and widely available methods to detect drug-resistant TB are very slow, taking weeks or months. Uh, that means that cases of drug-resistant TB are frequently missed, people's treatment regimens fail, and DRTB can spread in the community and more people die of tuberculosis. Um, molecular diagnostics, in contrast to traditional ways of detecting drug resistance using something called phenotypic drug sensitivity testing, uh, which requires a very long culturing and then drug sensitivity testing process, molecular diagnostics can provide a very fast way to diagnose drug resistant TB, therefore, thereby ensuring that people receive the correct medications upon their initial diagnosis and successfully complete treatment. So because of the promise of molecular diagnostics to address uh, uh, this problem, the WHO in July 2023 recommended targeted next generation sequencing, which is the intervention, the technology that we are doing an implementation study of for the diagnosis and treatment of tuberculosis in all settings with capacity, including low and middle income countries. And in uh, last month, I think, uh, maybe even, or maybe it was March, uh, they actually added these to the TB guidelines. Uh, targeted next generation sequencing for tuberculosis is a major development in TB policy and encourages countries to use targeted next generation sequencing to rapidly identify and initiate appropriate treatment for drug resistant tuberculosis. Uh, the issue with implementing this technology is it's a genetic sequencing technology. Targeted next generation sequencing technologies and infrastructures are expensive, complex, and difficult to implement. And there are, as of yet, no generalizable implementation strategies for LMICs. Uh, but in December 2023, the Botswana National TB Program and National TB Reference Lab, who I showed at the beginning, our partners work with on a variety of other projects, including previous qualitative research and uh, genomic epidemiology studies of TB. Uh, the Botswana TB Program announced that they were going to pilot uh, targeted next generation sequencing at six drug-resistant TB clinics. And so we're working in partnership with the Botswana Ministry of Health to conduct this pilot implementation study alongside the ministry's actual pilot of the technology with the goal of enhancing the overall TB care cascade in Botswana and coming up with 
in, uh, implementation strategies using implementation mapping. Uh, and so we're using implementation mapping. It's a, uh, I'll explain a bit about what that is in the next slide, but we're doing tasks one through four of implementation mapping to generate knowledge to guide efforts by the Botswana TB program to adopt and implement targeted next generation sequencing. It's intended as the first phase of a larger national implementation study of these efforts, which we want to apply for funding for after we execute the pilot to actually generate generalizable targeted next generation sequencing strategies for TB uh, and LMICs. But we're just in the pilot phase now, and it actually builds on past uh, research that we did with TB stakeholders in Botswana, uh, which is shown there on the right, which demonstrated high rates of acceptability for TB sequencing among TB stakeholders in the country. And so we're using implementation mapping and qualitative methods with key, t with key implementers and other stakeholders in Botswana, as well as patients, to understand and shape the implementation of targeted next generation sequencing for TB in Botswana. We'll be doing interviews with stakeholders and patients. Uh, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be convening an advisory board and having meetings and workshops with them. We're gonna be doing observation at key implementation sites. I'm a qualitative researcher and an ethnographer uh, at the clinics, but also at the labs. And then we're going to do focus groups with key stakeholders. And we're going to be using a variety of other implementation theories and frameworks that I don't have the time to get into today, but there they are. You've heard a lot about most of them today. Uh, so to accomplish task one, uh, we're going to conduct a needs and assets assessment to identify program implementers and adopters, which is task one of implementation mapping. And we're actually in progress here using data from our previous study, which dealt at the policy level stakeholders, less the facility level people. We're actually in the process of mapping the TB care cascade in Botswana to see where targeted next generation sequencing could fit in to create our study instruments and identify likely barriers and facilitators to be explored in our needs assessment once we're actually able to start it. So right now we're doing this cascade mapping exercise fitting barriers and facilitators in with CIFR, and also coming up with study instruments that will help us identify uh, likely uh, uh, implementation outcomes that we should be focusing on. Uh, task two, uh, which is in the planning stage, and we're going to conduct interviews with uh, TB stakeholders in Botswana and engage our advisory board to identify the precise performance objectives for key adopters and implementers. It's task two of implementation mapping. And we're going to use the Proctor framework to identify key implementation outcomes that will determine what a successful rollout of this technology would look like in Botswana. Uh, we're doing that um, right now. We're in the planning stages for that. Uh, we're thinking that our likely outcomes are going to be around acceptability, feasibility, fidelity, and sustainability, with sustainability being really key because this is a very complex and costly technology to implement. And the ministry cares a lot about costs. Uh, we're in the planning stage for task three, which is to actually uh, gener generate two to three implementation packages um, that we are, are going to then, in task uh, four, workshop those implementation packages using the interviews that we have done uh, with stakeholders and patients and the observations we've done at sites and the uh, ERIC framework. We're going to workshop uh, those packages uh, with TB stakeholders in a series of six focus groups and workshops with our advisory board in order to select the best implementation package. And then we are going to come up to complete task four with the necessary material standard operating procedures and protocols to implement that. And that's, of course, far down the line for us, but that is planned. We are not there yet. And then um, there's a review of the study. Future research would be starting with implementation mapping task five, which is actually to implement the uh, implementation mapping uh, is to actually implement the implementation strategy and then pilot it across several sites, perhaps in a step wedge randomized cluster design, but that would come well after our pilot, but that is ultimately what we are aiming for. So thank you very much.